One in 1,000 children are born with a defect of the spine or of the head. These can be defects like spina bifida, where the neural tube is outside, where the spinal cord is outside the body due to a failure of the neural tube to close during development, or things like cleft palate, where the roof of your mouth fails to close, making it almost impossible to feed. That's almost 170,000 children born annually worldwide who are suffering and potentially dying from these life-altering defects. And they estimate that this number is even higher. Now, discoveries such as the impact of folic acid, which helps ensure the closure of the neural tube during development, has helped to lessen the amount of these defects by almost one quarter in the U.S. alone. However, the continued prevalence and severity of these defects speaks to a fact that researchers already know that there is no one single trigger for these defects. It can be diet, it can be environment, it can be genetics, or it can be a combination of all of these. So how can we go and narrow down what triggers we would like to study, and how can we go and figure out what triggers might actually be causing these? Modern day epidemiological studies use prevalence of diseases to help pinpoint causation, and we can do this in the archeological record as well. What my research looks into is how these conditions present in the archaeological record and then putting them into historical context to try and find out what these causations might be. For example, there is a well that was excavated in the Athenian Agora from the 2nd century BC and inside they found 450 infants. And of these 450 infants, we have nine instances of infant cleft palate. And what's so remarkable about these finds is that this is the first examples of infant cleft palate that we have in the archaeological record. We have one or two examples from later medieval times of adult cleft palate, but this is the first largest cluster find as to suggest similar causation. So what we can do is take a look at Hellenistic Athens, see what were they eating, what were some of the environments that were happening, what were some health stressors for mother and baby. And we can also go and take a look at the cultural perception towards deformation to paint the lived experience of a mother who gave birth to a baby with deformations as well as the baby itself. So by studying cranial neural tube defects in the archaeological record, we can shed a light on the lived experience, but then also suggest new considerations of causation and also support studies which currently study those triggers as well. Thank you.